great to have you back at the sim hangar my name's mark thanks for watching and let's get started in the sim let's head to general options and our first port of call is the graphics tab doesn't really matter what your settings are except make sure your display mode is full screen and you select the appropriate resolution suitable for your system in today's example i've chosen 1440p as i have a fairly beefy system with a 3090 graphics card for multi-monitor displays on mid to lower end systems i recommend you use 1080p we're done here now let's head to the camera tab and here we're only interested in one setting zoom the default setting is 50 my personal setting is 60 for multi-monitor you should experiment with this to what feels right for you and it depends how far away you are from your monitor yet keeping things realistic it's important to set this before you try and align up your various displays i've chosen a zoom factor of 60 simply because it felt right to me there is a more scientific way of calculating this details coming up shortly if you go overboard and choose a zoom factor of say 5 or 10 well you're not going to be able to align your displays you need to keep it realistic if for example you're doing a typical three monitor setup then depending on the size of your monitors etc your left and right monitors will be set up at about 45 to 60 degrees you need to position yourself accordingly so that your view is as real world as is practical if you're interested in establishing distances and angles more professionally then a colleague and fellow youtuber russ bolo is your man i'll leave a link below to his video and within that video he also provides further links to additional resources and reference once the zoom factor is set let's head to the experimental tab and this is where we can set up more than one display make sure your displays are on select add new render window when we select add new render window these are the default settings we'll see we have a lateral rotation offset move the camera horizontally vertical rotation offset and a roll rotation offset default settings for all are zero we can change this value by moving the slider bars as indicated or directly enter the numbers into the value boxes shown this will only change the camera view for the window selected if you have a third monitor well select add new render window again to set up the third display and the same configuration options will be available for your second display you have the option to select your resolution and it's strongly recommended that all of your monitors are set to the same resolution otherwise you'll have trouble getting things aligned and you have the option to choose either full screen or windowed mode and again it's recommended that any additional monitors be set to the same display mode as your main monitor once again it'll help you align things the lateral rotation horizontal movement works differently in microsoft flight simulator if you want to look directly right enter a value of 90. if you want to look directly left enter a value of minus 90. so right rotation works on a basis of 0 to 180 left 0 to minus 180. recommended starting point is 90 and minus 90. as i normally fly in vr I personally don't use multi-monitor so for demonstration purposes today i'm only using two 32 inch monitors and as mentioned both set at 1440p let's now jump into the sim i've selected the cessna with the g1000 panels and once loaded and assuming you haven't made any changes all monitors will be exactly the same as your main display in effect duplicates You'll note my secondary monitor, the one on the right, is not set to full screen. This is simply because I'm recording and need access to various apps. Normally, I would set this to full screen. You'll have to forgive my somewhat limited video recording skills. Once you're in sim, of course, you can select any aircraft you want. Note the screens are currently duplicates of each other. Let's head back to General Options and the Experimental tab, where we set up our multiple displays let's start with the lateral rotation offset and in the value box i'm going to type in 90 as the window is on my right and here you can see the view has automatically changed on the right monitor if i'd set up a third monitor well in that value box i'd type in minus 90 and that's my left hand view 
I'm going to change it from minus 90 to 90. There we go. So lateral rotation moves my camera horizontally. We can have a quick look in sim. Not bad, but not perfectly aligned. Back to our menus. And let's understand what vertical and roll rotation effects do. This is vertical rotation. Note the movements are from your fixed eye points. There are no individual zoom features for individual windows. It's a global setting. So that's vertical. Let's now try roll. And this effectively tilts the image up or down. These three offsets are designed to help you align the various displays. As you try and align your displays, note the sliders tend to move the display in big increments. Once you start getting your views dialed in, and there's a fair amount of trial and error involved, I recommend that you use the value boxes. And for those smaller movements that are all important, use decimals, as I have. I started with changes to my lateral rotation. As you make changes to your display, do it in small increments. And I can't give you a recommendation in terms of the best settings, as this will vary depending on the size of your monitor or TVs, how far away you are, what zoom level you have set, what resolution you're using. The number of variables are considerable, so unfortunately it's a matter of trial and error. And on a number of occasions I had to reset everything back to zero and start again. Now the way I'm doing it here is I'm set off to the side to accommodate the filming. But when you make changes, you should be set in your pilot position. As you vary your position and you vary your eye height, so the image alignment will change. I've now made a number of changes. I'm going to pop back into the sim and just see what it looks like. See if there's any improvement and that's significantly worse than what it was. So back to the adjustments. In his video, Russ Barlow makes reference to a number of sceneries freeware that can be downloaded that can help you align your displays quicker and easier. If you're struggling, then this is a strong recommendation. When aligning your displays, have a number of reference points, straight lines on a runway, a number of buildings, and so on. Multiple reference points will make the whole task considerably quicker and easier. Now, my final setting may not be perfect, but it was pretty good. And in my lateral rotation offset, I allowed for the bezel between the two monitors. In effect, I want the scenery to be hidden behind the bezel, as if it was a strut within the aircraft. And I can then test this, as I'm doing now, by flying over various sceneries just to see whether or not it's more or less accurate. Once again, this just adds to the realism. Here I'm flying over different colored fields, checking for size variances, height variances, and that the lines and hedgerows line up, etc. Another good way to test is fly along high ground. This will help you identify any vertical mismatches you may have. During my test here, I'm keeping my eye on the right hand side and the hills. Have you tried it yet? Let me know in the comments below. Multi-monitor support is a welcome addition to Sim Update 10 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Bit fiddly to set up, but once it's done, the experience is excellent. For those not into VR or cockpit building, it's the perfect choice. And I must say, overall, frame rates have been great. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. More highlights on Sim Update 10 coming soon. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.